Welcome everyone. Another day in quarantine. Uh, I've got another class flow for you. This is a 60-minute vinyasa, kind of all levels, athletic flow, doing a little bit of strengthening, a little bit of stretch. I hope you enjoy it. Again, if you want to follow one of my playlists from Spotify, my name on there is Todd Eric Scotland under Spotify, and pick any 60-minute flow. The structure is pretty much the same, so the music should match pretty well. For this class, you might want to have a couple blocks or anything in your house that resembles a block. You can use a water bottle, anything you can put your hands on. Um, you might need one for support, but you know, we gotta make do with what we have. I'll try to avoid using props specifically. And if you do have something like a blanket for your knees, we're doing a couple quad stretches. So if you have sensitive knees, you might want to have a blanket or something like that on your side. But let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so come into a comfortable seat. We'll start cross-legged for this. If you need to sit up on a blanket or something for your hips, you can always sit up on a blanket. Just start to tune inwards. Let everything start to quiet down. Deliberate roll back of the shoulders, take a next breath, squeezing the shoulder blades back, and then just let it relax. Notice if you're starting to lean forward, see if you can really line up your center of gravity along the spine, shoulders over your hips, mid ribs a little in, back of the rib cage lifting gently. Legs relax, the shoulders relax. Take a few deeper, slower breaths. You can use the sound of blue jai breath, that gentle rasping with a slight contraction in the back of your throat. It makes a very barely audible noise, and you can use that noise to even out your breath. So make the noise the same throughout your whole inhale and your whole exhale. So if someone were to listen close, they couldn't tell where in the breath you were. Keeping your breath calm and deep. Just reach your arms up overhead, interlace your hands, turn the palms up towards your ceiling. And just give a good stretch up through the thumb side of the hands and take a couple deep breaths into the sides of the ribs, still reaching up through the entire upper body. down to center and reach the knuckles forward. Roll the shoulders back on an inhale, deep breath in. And as you exhale, open the palms to the front away from you. Press whatever's in front of you away with the hands. Round the spine, drop chin to chest. Open the upper back, spread your shoulder blades apart, letting them protract away from the spine as you press forward through the arms and take deep breaths into the back of the body. Then breathe the arms back to center, sitting up. Release the hands, re-interlace behind your low back. And you can keep your thumbs at the low back as you roll the chest open, draw your elbows and shoulder blades back and look slightly up. Or if you can, bring the hands down away from the hips to the floor, or even turn the palms to the ground to press a little more. Lift the chest, everyone arch a little, looking slightly up. And a couple deep breaths high up into the upper chest, right in between the collarbones.
then gently release that. While we're here, just bring your hands behind you, fingers facing forward. Plant your feet out in front of you, heading in the heels. And then just lift the hips up, coming into reverse tabletop. Nice stretch across the front of the shoulders and chest. Open up and lift that space, again, in between your collarbones up towards the ceiling. Maybe shift around a little, a couple good breaths. Extend your right leg forward, coming into Janu Shashasana, left foot comes into the inner thigh. Turn towards the straight leg a little, the knee can be bent if you're tighter in the hamstrings or you can start to straighten out. But try to keep the heel in the ground, so you may need to demi-point or fully point your foot at first just to get the heel comfortably into the floor. Bring your hands behind you, we'll do it isometric before we do the forward fold, so there's no movement, it's just engaging a little. As you inhale, press the heel down into the floor, pull it back towards you, engage the back line and leg. And as you exhale, relax, lean forward a little bit into a slight stretch, not all the way down. And then come up a little to a comfortable place, maybe a little lower than you were before. Inhale, press the heel down, pull it back towards you. Exhale, go forward immediately as you release the tension. Maybe a little deeper, maybe not. And then hold a comfortable level. Inhale, lengthen, press the heel down into the floor, pull it back towards you, long spine, belly in. And exhale, release. This time, take a couple breaths, maybe into a slightly deeper forward fold. Or maybe not. It's early in class, it'll be easy on the body. Gently sit up and switch legs. So extending your left leg forward, bend your right leg in, bring the foot to the inner thigh, turn towards that straight leg, aiming the belly button towards the leg, and we'll go in stages three times and then a full fold. Sitting up tall, as you inhale, press the heel down, pull it back towards you, engage this back line of the leg. And as you exhale, relax, leaning into a gentle stretch. Again, Lengthen the spine, inhale to pull the heel back as you press it down into the floor. Exhale, relax, maybe a little further forward, again, maybe not. One more time. Inhale, lengthen the spine, pull the heel back towards you, press it into the floor. And exhale, relax, again, maybe take a few breaths in your forward fold. you like that isometric work, I tend to do that in almost all my poses when I first come into them, engaging back against them and then relaxing into them. Those of us that are no longer 12 to 14 years old <laughs> and we have very little elastin left in our muscle tissue, we need all the help we can get. Thinking more about relaxing the muscles than pulling them longer. One more breath. And then gently sit up. And just come over onto your hands and knees. Just a few rounds of simple cat-cow. As you inhale, look forward, lift the tailbone, belly down. As you exhale, round the spine, drawing the belly in, push the ground away. Again, inhale, look forward, draw the shoulder blades back, and exhale, round. Just breathing back and forth on your own, getting some nice movement all the way up and down the spine. Opening the back, then opening the front. Engaging the front and then engaging the back. Just shifting forwards and backwards as we extend and flex the spine. that I'm not necessarily breathing in line with the movements. I use the breath cues to assist you, but sometimes it's nicer to move faster. Your breath may come faster, it may not. But if I were to kind of target my movements to my breath, my breath is really long. I would just be sitting here all day. It might get a little boring. So just 
Just make sure you're breathing evenly, even if you're not matched to my breath cues. And then press back to downward facing dog. Give yourself a couple breaths, pedal it out. Just make sure that the fingers are spread nice and wide through the palms. Lengthen the sides of the waist back. With a gentle lift up through the back of the hips. And then just slowly start to walk your way forward to the front of the mat. Once you get to the front, a couple breaths and a ragdoll, just a gentle forward fold, soften the knees, hang down. If your back doesn't like being unsupported, just keep your hands on the floor or on blocks. Bend your knees as much as you'd like. And slowly, with your next breath, start to round your way up to standing, reaching the arms up over your head last. And then exhaling the hands hard, feet together at the front of your mat. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a lengthen back. And reach your right leg back, set the knee down, inhaling the arms high into your low lunge. And then exhale the hands down, step back, high plank, lower halfway, use the knees on the floor if you need to. Inhale, forward facing. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Lift your right leg and step forward inside your right thumb, left knee comes down, low lunge, second side, arms lift. And then hands come down, step forward, feet together. Flat back, and fold. Inhale up, and hands to heart. Again, inhale, reach up, exhale, fold forward. Flat back, bring your left leg behind you, knee down, arms lift, and then set the hands down, step back, bring yourself forward as you lower halfway. Inhale, forward facing, exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your left leg and step it forward. Set your right knee down, arms lift. And hands come down, step forward to the front, flat back into your fold. Inhale to rise and hands to heart. Again, with a little variation, reach up. Exhale back down, flat back. Right leg goes back, knee down, arms lift. This time bring your hands to the floor. Slide your right knee further back, walk your left foot out, twisting quad stretch to the left, lean into your right hand. Your left hand can either be on the inner thigh, two options here. Tuck your back toes, lift the knee a little bit, and twist through the chest, stretching the front of your right hip, or keep the knee down, reach back with your left hand, and draw the foot in for the quad stretch. Either way, try not to collapse your right shoulder, lift up, engage the tricep back. And open, a couple breaths. Gently release, square off as you step back, come forward to lower, inhale, forward facing dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your left leg, sorry, your right leg, <laughs> and step it forward, left knee down. Lift the arms into your lunge, and then set your hands down, Slide your left knee back, walk your right foot to the right, hand to inner thigh, either tuck the toes, lift the knee and twist, or reach back for the foot, draw it towards your hips. Still lift out of that left shoulder. You can look back if that's okay with your neck. It's not really necessary. You can look down at the floor or chin in line with chest. Let it go, square off as you step forward to the front, flat back and fold. Inhale to stand, and hands to heart. Last one, reach up, and fold down. Flat back, send your left leg back, knee down, arms lift. 
This time, as you bring your hands down, shift your hips backwards for half split or runner stretch. You can walk the heel out so your hips are over the back knee, squaring the whole body off and folding down over that front leg. You can use blocks under your hands if you're a little tighter in your hamstrings, so think more about keeping your spine long rather than necessarily coming down. Plug this whole leg back through the hip. You can flex or relax the toes, depends on if you need a little extra slack for the hamstrings. Release, step back, lower halfway. Inhale, forward facing. Exhale, down facing dog. Left leg comes forward. Yes, <laughs> right knee down, arms rise. And then hands down, shift your hips back. Find that runner stretch on the second side. When I don't have a class to look at, the right and left can get a little challenging. Pull that left hip back, lengthen out and fold down, or just stay low. Hold that left hip back into place. I like to imagine there was a bar across the front of my hips holding them back as I tried to pull my heart forward. Jam and release. Step all the way forward, flat back and fold down. Inhale all the way to stand, arms overhead, and then hands to heart. We're kind of balancing. We're not gonna be moving forwards and backwards, but sometimes if you're really close to a wall, it can really mess up your balance. Just a psychological thing, really. So make sure that you've got some space around you. Find a focal point for your balance, fix that drishti on an unmoving point. Shift your weight onto the right foot. We'll start in tree with the left leg up. Doesn't matter how high it comes. The higher it comes, the more you need to open the hip and really work that thigh in. If it's a little lower, it tends to be a little bit nicer on the balance. Lift the back of the ribs, draw the belly in. Maybe reach the arms out. Maybe float that left arm down, reaching your right arm up, coming into a box side bending tree. Stay with this side, release the lifted leg. Just lightly, the left big toe touches the ground. It's just for balance. Your weight's still on the right foot. Bring your hand to your hip for support. And then deep in the side bend, really letting the hips shift over to the right. As you twist very slightly towards the ceiling, you can look up. Imagine you're looking really far off into the distance. And then turn down towards the ground. Either keep your hand here on the hip for support, or you can grab the upper wrist with your bottom hand, give it a little extra traction. And then draw it back in, come to center. And then second side, shift your weight to the left and bring your right foot up into tree. Press the hip in, open this hip out, zip up that midline. Reach your arms out or keep them in center. Maybe start to float the right arm down, left arm lifting. Goodness for sunlight on a quarantine. <laughs> Stay leaning to the side, release your right big toe just out for balance. Right hand to the hip, then deep in your side bend. Again, twisting the chest very slightly towards the ceiling. It's not a big back bend or anything like that. Not like you're looking really far off. Then turn slightly towards the floor, grab a hold of that upper wrist with your bottom hand, or keep your hand on the hip for support. And back up to center, hands to heart. Now we're gonna go back to the other side. Cross your left ankle over the right thigh, figure four shape. Make sure the foot is really crossed over so you can move your foot around if you needed to. And then sit back, squatting into your standing leg. 
it's a hip stretch, not really and a balance, but it's more about the hips. You shift your weight back into that standing heel, heart forward, hips reach backwards. Hands can come to the leg, maybe the elbows, maybe the chest can come to the shin. We're not taking the arm balance unless you really, really want to. This is really just for the hip stretch. Keep your hips shifting down and back. If you cross the shin, you can use your arms and the shin to traction your spine longer. And then gently stand up and switch legs. Right ankle crossing over. And sit back. And you can use the hands, use the elbows, or cross over and maybe press the triceps and your shin into each other to lengthen the spine here. You can always grab the standing ankle or you can bring your fingertips to the floor if they reach. And you can really adjust the hips a little bit without worrying about your balance. And then carefully release up, set the foot down, and shake it out. Standing in the front of your mat. Again, find a focal point, but this time both legs together. Float your heels up into the air. Zip up your midline. Try not to let the hips shift forward. Really hollow the ball in the body in as much as you can. Engage the calves. Zip in, squeeze in. Set your right heel down. Hands to heart. Left leg goes back into your Dikasana. Find your balance. <laughs> if I can find my balance, so can you. Bend the standing leg, touch those toes down, fingertips down, knee to the floor, revisit that runner stretch. Shifting back. If you know Triangle Mukha, you can sit back to the inside of the heel and come into your forward fold. That's a lot for this knee though. You're not sitting on the heel, you're on the inside of it. So runner stretch or half split again is totally fine. And then shift forward into your low lunge. Bring your hands to your front thigh. Traction the thigh out as you shift a little deeper. So you're hugging your right elbow belly in, pressing the knee away. It's giving yourself a little bit more space there. And then feel free to keep the hands here as you lift your chest. Maybe bring your hands to your low back, comes to spine. Pressing the back of your hips down for support. Lift the chest up, draw your elbows and shoulder blades back. A low lunge back bend to preparation. Use your hands to support you, shift your hips a little bit forward, lift the heart up. And then release, bring your hands to the ground, tuck your back toes, send your right leg up and back to your down dog split. Bend the knee, open the hip a little, you can shake it around if you need to. And square off, step that right foot about two thirds of the way forward to the hands. Shift your weight back into your heels, walk your hands back around the front foot or grab blocks again. Square off, anchor down into the heels through the hips, and then fold forward. Try not to fall forward into your toes, really anchor and spiral down into the legs. Get a little abduction between your heels, support the inner thighs. flat back, soften the knees a little, twisting triangle. You can bring your left hand either across the foot or higher on a prop to the inside of the foot. Bring your other hand to right thumb to right hip crease. Gently press back, give yourself an assist. You can hold it here to keep the stretch about the side of the leg, or you can start to reach up, taking the spinal twist as well. But don't collapse or swivel the hips off so that you lose the legs. Keep the stretch in the legs, hand at the hip if you need it. You can always bend the back knee if you need to, to relax your low back. Both hands down, step forward, feet together, flat back, and fold. 
Inhale, expand. And hands to heart. Step to the front of your mat again. Go a little bit further back for that pyramid. Find your focal point. And float your heels up into the air. Hollow belly in. Up through the tailbone down. Squeeze inwards. Lower your left heel. Hinge over that left leg into Digasana or Warrior 3 with hands and heart. Start to bend the standing leg, touch those toes down, fingertips down, knee down. Shift back into your runner stretch or into your triangle muka, sitting to the inside of that back heel. And just take a forward fold again, just a couple breaths. Send the leg up and back, down dog split. Roll it out, shake it out. And then square off, step the foot about two thirds of the way forward. Walk your hands back around to that foot. Anchor down into your heels and fold over that front leg. Breathe really deeply into your back. Use the inhale to give yourself a little space. And exhale to fold into that space. Soften a little for the twist. Bring your right hand closer in or across, maybe higher. Left hand comes to your hip, press the hip back. Maybe reach that arm up. But if that throws the hips out of place, Try to stay grounded into your heels, even if you need to bend the back knee. But try not to swivel your hips off side to side. Keep that left hip in line behind your left heel, even as you twist. Bring it down, step forward, feet together, and fold. Inhale to rise. And hands to heart, feet together in front of your mat. Chair pose. Sit back with Katasana, take a deep breath in, and then exhale, forward fold. Long flat back, and then step or float back to your low push up. Inhaling, forward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. From here, lift your right leg. Knee to nose, round it in. Tuck in, lift up. Inhale, reach it back. Tuck the leg in, stay high as you come forward, knee to nose. Inhale, reach it back. One more time, pull it forward, tuck up, lift a little higher, place the foot, come up into warrior one or high lunge. Whatever is better for your back leg. Get that shift of the hips to face forward, right hip behind the knee, left hip can be open, just depends on your joints. Interlace your hands behind you, roll your chest open, and bow forward for a warrior. Try to avoid this shift off to the right through the hips. You're not trying to bury your head in the sand. Keep that working in the abduction between the legs to scissor the hips over to the left again. You may not come as far with the upper body, that's okay. Be gentle with your arms. Back up, inhale, and exhale, vinyasa, or straight to downward dog. From 
downward dog, lift your left leg, knee to nose, tuck it in, stay lifted, inhale, reach it back, exhale, pull it in, lift, inhale, extend, again, bring it forward, step on the foot, come up into your warrior one or high lunge, arms rise, steady in both legs, feel the shift from the base of the pelvis, not leaning forward into your front foot. So ground yourself down into the mat. Interlace, open, and bow forward. Inhale back up to your warrior or lunge, and then exhale into your vinyasa all the way through to downward dog. Maintain downward dog for a couple breaths, or maybe a quick child's pose. Spread the fingers, wrap the shoulders in, and lift the hips. Next breath, soften the knees. If you came down, rejoin us. And then hop your step forward, into that flat back, fold down. Chair pose to rise, bend back, and then stand up against the heart. Again, through, sit back into the chair, take a deep breath, and exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. And your vinyasa back to downward dog. Skip chaturanga if you want to. And downward dog, lift your right leg. Just step forward to the midline between your thumbs and open to the left for your warrior two. Shifting into that front leg, keep that knee tracking in line with the toes, nice and open across the front of your hips. Arms extended, shoulders relaxed. Reverse your warrior. Left hand back, right arm lifts. Stay reversed as you straighten the front leg, and then tilt the hips back as you reach the right arm forward, coming into your triangle pose. You can always put a block underneath your right hand. You can also step your back foot closer if you like to. I tend to take a wide triangle. Long around the bottom side. And then everyone look down, bend that front knee. As you plant your hands, step back to high plank, but don't lower. From here, heels come to the left, reach your right arm up for side plank. Balancing on your left arm, stack, pull the belly in. Your feet can be separated for balance, or you can stack them. You can always bring the left knee down to modify. Pull the hips up, pull your bottom shoulder in towards the bottom. Then hand comes down, right leg steps forward, and set the back knee down. Just for a moment. Start to walk your hands down the left side of your mat, coming into a drop stance, bending your left knee, straighten the front leg, don't be so low that you don't have control of your upper body. If you need to be a little bit higher, you can even lean on your left elbow. Or you can have your hands floating or on the floor. But we're not going to be here too long. Look forward. Reach out through your right palm. Flying warrior. Turn those right toes forward as you come onto the right leg. Reach out with your right hand. Pull yourself up into your balance. Reaching the arms apart like you're trying to catch something, but you're not allowed to step forward. If the back arm stays active so you can bend the knee and come right into your standing bow. Release, chair pose, and forward fold. Make your way through vinyasa back to your downward facing dog. From downward dog, lift your left leg and step forward to the center and open to warrior two on the second side, left leg forward. 
Open that front knee, open the front of your hips, nice and strong into both legs. Use your leg strength to help you shift the hips forward, not just falling. Spread the fingers, relax the shoulders back. Reverse, straight hand back, lift the left arm. Straighten that front leg out. And then tilt your way into your triangle pose. Give me a nice and long through that left side. Right arm reaches up. Stay connected to your strong legs. Try not to let the hips go off side to side. Keep that left hip in line with your left heel if you can. You can look any direction that works for your neck. You can look down, out, or up. Up tends to be a little bit tense for the neck, so I don't usually recommend it. Then everyone look down, soften the knee, plant your hands. Step back to plank, don't lower. Heels come to the right, left arm up, side plank balance on your right arm. Firm up that bottom side as you lift the bottom hip, plug the shoulder in. And steady yourself. And then back to plank. Step your left foot forward, set the back knee down for a moment. And then start to pivot around to your right. Pivoting the feet, bending right knee, straightening left leg into that drop stance or side lunge. Again, only come down so far as makes sense. You can balance, you can support yourself with your hands. Reach out for your left arm. Come forward, pivot the toes forward, reach out to that left arm, flying warrior. Pull the back leg into the air. Catch your balance, reach out. And bend that lifted leg, grab a hold of the ankle, and work into that standing bow. Don't worry about a deep back bend, just hold your balance steady. Feet together into your chair, and stand up hands to heart. Now next, just separate your feet hits width apart. Outers of your feet fairly parallel, soften the knees. Come down into a variation of Uttanasana, just a standing forward hold. It can be like a ragdoll, depends on how tight you are. But if you can, grab a hold of the first two fingers, or your big toes with the first two fingers and thumb. Lift the belly in and up as you bend your elbows out to the side and carefully draw the upper body down. Stay with your breath. Gently release. Bring your hands around to the sides and behind you and either grab wrists behind the ankles or thread the arms back through to grab the front of your shins. Bend your knees to get the upper body down into your thighs and then keep that hug as you lift the hips and bow the head in. Your legs may not straighten, but try to keep the contact with your upper and lower body. Then release, bring your fingertips out in front of you, maybe onto blocks. Rock your weight back onto your heels, lift the balls of the feet. Lengthen out the spine as much as you can. And then lower the toes, bend your knees, round your way back up to standing. Reach the arms up just to stretch it out. And hands to heart. Feet together at the front of your mat. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Flat back. And your vinyasa through to downward dog. Again, you can always just step into downward facing dog. From here, lift your right leg. Step to right thumb. Set the back knee down. For this quad stretch, you may need to pat the back knee, fold the mat, or use a blanket. 
hands to the front thigh, traction, you're a little narrower than we were in our other low lunges. If you can, reach your left hand back, grab a hold of the foot, start to draw it closer towards the hip. If you have it really close and you're steady, you can start to reach your right arm up. Make it a part of the pose though, it's not just hanging out in space, you're really drawing your attention up from the front of that left hip and low belly. If you don't have the foot, just tuck the toes with the knee down and shift into a deeper lunge, hugging your belly in. And then shift the hips back a little bit, bring your hands to the inside of the front foot. Walk it out a little bit, but not a lot. Head to ankle pose. Now a lot of times in class, even my students who've been coming to me for years, you know who you are, always take this in a weird way. They let the knee go way out, like kind of like a yin dragon pose, and they shift forward and they think this is a deep stretch. And they, uh -huh. No. Back the hips up, knee over the heel, lots of space here. Then reach your right elbow down and bow the head. It's not about shifting forward, it's not this back hip, it's all about right in here. If you can, the arm comes under the leg. Trying to keep that right elbow down on the floor and hug the hips in. You can do that piece where you lift the back heel or the back knee and find your balance here. If you can stay this low and supported, you can even bind around the leg, but that's really optional. Try not to do this. Scissor your legs together, keep your hips in line. Come back up and just step into downward facing dog. From here, lift your left leg, step forward, set your right knee down, just second side of that. So use whatever padding you need under your right knee, a little more narrow in your stance. Hands to the front thigh, and either shift as you pull in and lift, or grab a hold of your back foot in your right hand, draw the heel in. And steady your balance. Inside of the front foot, again, back your hips up, kind of 90 degrees in your legs. Walk your left foot out a little bit, and then lower down onto your elbows. Lots of space under your left leg, don't collapse the hips forward. Not necessarily wrong, it's just a completely different stretch. Try to open up that front thigh, the back of the thigh, inner hamstrings, adductors. Maybe the arm sneaks under the leg if you can keep the elbow down. Maybe you bring that back heel down. Maybe you bind. Gently release, step back into your downward facing dog. Pedal it out. And then step your right foot forward again, set your left knee down. You may need blocks for this. Just putting them on the sides. So we're going for a really wide lunge. Your lunge may be wide enough that it's actually a split. But don't worry about the word split. It tends to bring fear into people's hamstrings. Just start to walk your front foot forward, back knee backwards. Support yourself with your blocks as high as you need to. Try to lift the chest. Some of you can slide your legs a little bit further apart towards your split, letting the hips come a little closer towards the floor. But still try to lift up, try not to bow forward. After a couple of breaths, just carefully come back into your downward facing dog somehow. Pedal it out. And then step your left foot forward, bring your right knee down, start to walk your left foot out, your right knee back, 
Keep doing that, foot forward, knee backwards. If you're close, but not on the ground, if you put a block under your left sit bone or some support, it can add compression as well as support. The attachments of the hamstrings. Or maybe you slide into your lunge. It depends on your hips and your body. For me, I don't think I'll ever have the squared off hips, no matter how low I come. It's okay, I'm fine with that. 46, still able to get my hips on the ground. Not too bad. And then make your way back to your downward facing dog, pedal it out. And take child's pose. Just let the backs of the legs contract lightly. Let the hips and the low back relax. here, coming up onto your hands and knees. You can go to down dog if you'd like for pigeon, but this is not necessary. Bring the right knee out to the right wrist, angle the shin forward, bring the foot forward as much as you need to. Change the angles, use support underneath your right hip if you need to, maybe under the belly, between the belly and the shin. And nestle your way back into your hips, coming down onto your elbows so that you can control the shift backwards rather than forwards turning that left hip towards the ground and breathe deeply into the back of your body. After another deep breath, come up just onto the hands, and you're either just going to sit up, facing the chest forward. If you brought your foot forward, you may need to bring it in a little bit to protect the knee for this next piece. Bring your right hand to the center, reach your left hand back, maybe touch the inner thighs, you lift the heart, and just look forward. If this twist is okay in your back, you can bend the back leg and grab a hold of the foot. Now it can stay like this, sort of like half bow and just lift your chest up, or if it works for you to take another quad stretch, draw that heel in towards your hips. A couple good breaths. And then we'll just carefully switch sides. So you can go back to downward dog, pedal it out, you can go back to tabletop, a couple cat cows, shift things around. But when you're ready, bring your left knee to your left wrist, foot angle forward. Now remember, hips are usually different side to side. For me, this side is a lot tighter in external rotation. So I'm not gonna go quite as deep into the pose. So trying to shift a little evenly towards the floor with the hips and breathing. center. Again, you don't need to reach back at all. You can just come up into a little bit of a back bend, more stretch for the front of your right hip. Where the left hand comes to center, give your back a test. Just reach back before you grab for the foot. See if this feels okay. If you feel any cramping in your right low back, don't grab the foot. Just come back to center. Otherwise, you're going to grab the foot. You either take that half bow pigeon, lifting, or you can bring the heel in and take the quad stretch. Those of you that are doing King Pigeon, I knew you'd do it anyway, so I didn't need to say it. That's the full back bend, bringing the foot to the back of the head.
gently release. Shift back to your downward dog, your tabletop. And then we'll meet the tabletop. Tabletop. Grab something, it can be a bolster, it doesn't have to be two separate things. Two blocks if you have them at the front of your mat, the highest height if that works. You can adjust the height, you can put something else softer on top of them. We'll take supported Anahatasana. So bringing the elbows and the triceps up onto the blocks. Hands start together, fingers to the sky, back of the hips and knees up enough that your hips are really over the knees. Try not to over back bend for this one. Tuck the tailbone. Make this more about the stretch into serratus on the sides under your shoulders. And to get a little deeper there, you can bring the fingertips together and curl your wrists apart. So it's just fingertips touching, keep the elbows in, hollow the belly and the ribs in. So it's really more of a stretch for the arms and the shoulders, right down into serratus on the sides of the ribs. Relax the head down between the arms. If your hips are shifting forward in front of the knees, I'd rather you be closer to child's pose than closer to being on your belly. And carefully bring it in, come off the blocks. If you have a block, you may want it. We'll take three versions of dolphin or bhuja svanasana, bent arm dog. I'd like to have a block between my hands. It just depends on how slippery your mat is and how much control you have around your shoulders and getting that wrap from your serratus in. Coming down, forearms as parallel as you can get them. Don't let the elbows go too wide. Come back to your tabletop, press down into the arms, tuck your toes, and lift up into your dolphin pose. It'll be a little more challenging to get the heels down because of the angles than it is in downward dogs. Don't worry about planting your heels. Press into your forearms, extend the hips back, relax your head, and breathe here. Just the simple version to start. Down. Shift it around a little bit, quick child's pose if you need it. If you took that in the neck, you can roll your head side to side over the forehead. And then we'll set up for version two. Elbows in, hands apart, tuck the toes, lift the hips, walk your left foot in a little bit, lift your right leg up, and just find a balance here. Still press into your forearms. Maybe lift higher up to left tiptoes, but keep the pressure back like you're trying to send your right foot up and back rather than forward. Stay off your head. And then switch sides. I don't care if your hips open as long as they don't both fall off to the side. So long, as long as your right leg is still integrated and in line. The left hip can be a little open. And then set the foot down, bring it all the way down. Rest in your child's pose. Now for this next variation, if you've taken my class, then you've definitely done this with me before. Opposite arm and leg lift. Now, obviously, the arm doesn't have to fully lift. You can just come up to fingertips with one elbow off the floor. Coming up through your dolphin, lift your right leg up. Try to hold steady as you lift your left elbow. If that's working, you can walk your left palm back in line with your right elbow. Lift up a little higher and walk that foot in. Eventually, this is an arm balance, but for now, just stay steady down into your right forearm. Lift up and then bring it back. 
You can reset if you need to reset, otherwise just come to the second side, lift your left leg up, lift the right elbow, maybe right hand comes back, maybe hop in closer, lift a little higher, push into that left forearm, stay steady. Arm back, leg back, child's face. Give it a little bit of a rest, maybe roll the head out a little bit. Then we're gonna make our way over onto the back. You can take a vinyasa if you'd like, or just swing your legs out in front of you. Come over onto your back, knees to the sky, feet on the floor, as if we were gonna set up for a bridge. I'll just windshield wipe a little, you can rock the knees side to side. Loosen up the hips a little bit. Then bring the heels in so you can brush them with your fingertips. Feet nice and parallel. Lift up into a low bridge. Roll your shoulder blades a little bit underneath. Walk your feet even closer together. Then reach your right leg forward, knees and thighs in line. Lower your hips almost to the floor. Then as you lift your hips, reach the right foot forward, hips up. Not foot to the sky, foot forward. So you're really pressing out of the front of your hips. Then lower almost to the ground. Lift up, reach that foot forward and lower. And up and forward and lower. Again, lift and lower down. And lift and lower. Once more, lift it up, set the foot down, and reach your left leg out. Right heel is firm on the ground, lower the hips. And lift it up, reach that left foot forward, lower down. And lift and reach. And lower. And lift and reach. And lower down. Lift up, reach forward. One more time, lower. Lift up and reach. Set the foot down, set the hips down. Push the heels. Full bridge. If you're ready for wheel, bring your hands by your shoulders. Otherwise, keep your hands by your heels as you lift the hips. You can roll your arms underneath. You can clasp hands if that's helpful. Otherwise, just reach towards your outer heels. Bridge up, spread your toes. Lift your upper thighs towards the ceiling. And just breathe. Carefully start to bring the hips down, release the arms, shake it out a little bit, really gently, not a little, not too aggressive side to side. Then one more back bend, either bridge or wheel, support the bridge if you have a block, you can slide on your hips and just rest. Otherwise, you can bring your hands by your ears, nothing too aggressive with your back bend. Curling up and lifting, see if you can find a nice open wheel. Nothing too extreme, forward or backwards. Let the head relax a little. Keep the legs engaged and breathe deeply. Jam and break it down. Hands to your forehead or just rest. Again, maybe roll a little side to side. My longtime students have probably never seen me do a wheel before. I don't often back bend, or at least I don't often do active back bends. And then on your back, just cross your right ankle over your left thigh, give yourself a brief figure four. Gently hug that left leg in, or just leave the left foot on the ground if this is enough.
and just switch sides. Cross, bring your knees together, lower them both off to the right, supine twist, reach your left arm or elbow out to the side, relax and soften the whole body with the twist. A few long, fuller breaths. Side, knees to the left. Reach your right arm out. Deep breath. center. Shake it out if you need to. Maybe a brief happy baby if you'd like. And then set out for full Shavasana. Use whatever you need to help you rest, props under you or over you for support or warmth. And just really allow yourself to rest. Relax the jaw, the muscles around your eyes. Arms and legs just heavy to the floor. Let go of the control of your breath. Give yourself permission to rest. And the next breath starts to move the fingers and toes around. Feel good, you can stretch your arms back over the head, press your toes forward, full body stretch. With another breath, curl up onto one side or the other. And then from your side, gently use the arms to press up to seated. Coming to an easy seat, set up nice and tall, draw the shoulders back. Life, you can bring your hands over the heart. We'll take one more breath all together. Take a deep inhale. Hold that breath in, soften around it. If you have room, take a little more air. Hold it. And exhale. Namaste. Thank you all again so much for joining for this hour-long class. I hope I will get to see you soon again in person, but keep an eye out for a list of online live classes
classes as well as these pre-recorded classes. David and I are trying to come up with a whole class schedule for a live streaming of our teachers. It's just more fun, it's a cool experience to know that it's live and we're all practicing together at the same time. It feels more communal that way. But we'll always have them online if you need to watch it later. They'll be recorded, still listed on our Vimeo.com account. You could find it also on YouTube and Facebook, but they'll be all stored on our Vimeo account. Um, Vimeo.com slash showcase slash South Boston Yoga. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Please stay safe, stay healthy. Don't lose any of these safety requirements that we're kind of giving ourselves. I know we get bored of it, but keep washing your hands and all that good stuff. And I hope to see you soon.